the next 52 minutes, Ghana Black Stars will line up against their Moroccan counterparts in the Group C opener in the 2021 African Cup of Nations football tournament, which kicked off in Cameroon yesterday. Ahead of the start of their campaign, President Ekofad charged the team to bring home the trophy. But do we have what it takes to win this edition of AFCON? That and more will be our focus as we build up to Morocco versus Ghana, which will be live on Joy 99.7, Love 99.5 in Kumasi, and many other affiliates in Ghana. Also online via myjoinline.com app. Now joining us is George Adu Jr., uh, who will be having some analysis uh, prior to the game. Gary Al Smith, who will also be bringing us commentary at four, also will be joined uh, by two other football experts, Jerome Ochri, uh, who is a football analyst, and Uri Kwampofo, who is with Joy Sports. He's also been running commentary. Uh, good to uh, see you, gentlemen. All right, uh, before they join us, let's start our build up from the uh, lineup. Let's hear from the president, Echo Fad first. On the eve of the commencement in Cameroon of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations Championship, I send best wishes from all Ghanaians to you, the playing, technical, and management teams of the senior national soccer side the Black Stars. We're all happy that finally, the AFCON 2021 tournament, which was postponed from last year, is now going to be held, the coronavirus pandemic notwithstanding. Like with every other edition of AFCON, the Ghanaian people demand nothing short of ultimate glory from the stars. The pressure to succeed is understandably high because of our status as full-time witness and also because it has been 40 long years since we last lifted the trophy. The target for you, naturally, is to bring the cup home. We have to go a step further than the second places recorded in 1992 2010, and 2015, and bring the 40-year drought to an end. The task may be daunting, but it is certainly not insurmountable. I believe that in the current crop of players, we have the talent to match any of the best teams on the continent. The Ghana team has been penciled down is one of the favorites for the tournament because of its sheer quality. Let us work to bring the prediction to fruition. You, the current crop, wear the jersey of the Black Stars, the same jersey won by Ghanaian legends such as Ado Damite, Ben Simmons, Agrifin, Wilberforce Infum, Edward Aqua, Mohamed Salisu, the non pare Babayara, Abdul Razak, Upukunti, and Francis Kumi. Wear it with pride. Wear it with determination. Be of one mind and spirit. And be united on or off the pitch. Whether you are in the starting 11 chosen by coach Milovan Rejevak or not, you owe it a duty to back and support wholeheartedly your teammates representing the nation on the field. That is how a fifth AFCON trophy for Mother Ghana can be achieved. To you, my fellow Ghanaians, now more than ever, is the time to throw our unwavering support behind the team. Yes, I'm aware that there are 30 million coaches in Ghana. However, in this age of social media, we cannot allow any form of pessimism, especially in our comments, to filter through to the team. We cannot 
directly or indirectly, afford to break their morale. In the highs and lows, in good or bad times, we must show the team that we are Ghanaians and we look out for each other, no matter what. We can make the Black Stars a force to reckon with, once again, on the continent and in world football, beginning with this tournament. Go for gold. Go for the fifth AFCON trophy. We can do it. I know we can. May God bless the Black Stars and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. Well, that charge is a huge demand on the current young Black Star squad. So, do the stars have what it takes to win Afcon? Stars can win against Morocco with the, like, with the likes of Hakim Ziyech and then the other players that <clears throat> Morocco have got playing in La Liga, Serie A, and then do compare them to our players. Most of them even play Division Two. So there is no way a Division Two player can outscore a professional footballer who plays in the first league in, let's say, Premier League or La Liga. So I, I don't think Blasters can win. Even a draw will be difficult. There is always more room for improvement, like I said. So, yes, definitely Ghana can always pull their way through it. So if you should ask, I can say Ghana can go by probably like a 2 to nil or something like that. So fingers crossed, hoping for the best. Yeah. Um, I believe they stand a chance because... They've, they met Morocco three times, and it's a win-win and one draw. So I believe this time they'll do all. They'll get them. I believe in Ghana, and we'll make it. Um, today, Ghana is possible to win today's match, considering um, our players we are missing today. Friendly match, I would say we miss most of our professional players as well. So today, hopefully, we will win, against, we will win our first match today. The Ghana match, we are expecting a big race for them. It's, it has been a long, we haven't experienced that much great. So we are expecting them to bring a good resource for us. I think that is what we are all praying for it. I don't think, oh, we don't have team. This is for, for, for Kokra football team. We don't have team. So I don't think we are going to win. Well, we, are, we will come back. After three games, we will come back. There's not a chance of uh, winning against Morocco because... Um, I think they have learned from their previous mistakes, so I think uh, there's a win for them today. I, I think this is the best time for the Black Stars to win back the love from the Ghanaian people. We all know that for some years now, uh, it's been difficult for the country to win its fifth AFCON. So as a, as a country and as people, we can only expect the players to give their best performance to get the back, to, to win back the love the Ghanaian people have reposed in them over the past years because I believe that without the love from the people, uh, the morale and the confidence of the players will be affected. So this is a true test for our players and they have to take up the challenge and man up to the occasion. And those were your views from the streets of Accra. Now I have with me in the studio Uriku Ampofo. Ah, good to see you, Uriku. Good to see you, Aisha. Also joining us via Zoom is Gary L. Smith, who will also be joined by Georgia Dodrinia and Jerome Motri, who is a football analyst, also, will also join us shortly. But let's start with the excitement that has built up I mean, around this uh, tournament. It, it looks like it has intensified this year. Yeah, it has. And I think it's, it's probably due to the whole feel of having to wait uh, for an extra year due to COVID-19. You know, the tournament was supposed to kick off uh, some 10, 11 months ago. Uh, however, uh, due to the outbreak of COVID-19, it had to be moved forward. COVID is still around, uh, but I think we have enough uh, to be able to, you know, deal with it this time around. And so uh, we're seeing a tournament in a very difficult period and you would have to, you know, commend all the authorities involved despite facing uh, some adversity and some opposition as well to still stand their ground and organize this competition, I think it's a big win for Africa. With regards to the Black Stars, 
you, you just know that no matter how bad things get, there would always be a huge pool of Ghanaians very, very concerned mm. about how the team plays, no matter what they say. Mm. They would say something different, but when the team loses, they feel it. Mm -hmm. So when, when it comes to Ghana, people are always very interested. Well, and one thing for sure, you must eat your fufu or whatever <laughs> you want to eat before yeah. the match starts because you may be starving at the end of the match. But one interesting thing I've observed is the uh, international media, the interest that they've generated. Uh, for instance, I think Sky will be uh, taking this whole thing live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me bring in uh, Gary L. Smith. What, what's accounting for this? Uh, George Ado Jr. What's accounting for the interest that the international media is showing uh, AFCON 2021? Well, Aisha, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me there? Claire. Aisha, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, okay, George. Well. Uh, okay, I'm coming to you from a boiling uh, media room as we get ready for uh, the Black Stars game against uh, Morocco. But I, I think the question was about why the foreign media are increasingly getting interested in the Africa Cup of Nations. I think it's because our African I mean, exports are doing so well in the major leagues around the world. If you look at the top five major leagues, you can easily make a case for one African or two or three Africans doing very, very well. They are almost single-handedly running at the show out there. If you take the English Premier League, the likes of Mohamed Salah, you know, Thomas Pate, Sadio Mane are all doing well week in, week out. Even before the Africa Cup Nations will begin, Daniel Amate and uh, Wilfred Ndidi of Nigeria with a massive performance against Liverpool, who are, you know, one of the top guns in the English Premier League. So definitely all around the world, it's a case of African players showing what they've got. And I think that the foreign media have just understood that at this point, we need to step in and ensure that this market, in quotes, does not run away from us. That's why they're, they're here. I've met a lot of my friends from the BBC, from Sky, you know, um, others are reporting heavily for the Athletic in the UK, you know, talk sport, what, what have you, what have you. They're all here to make sure that they can be a part of this Big, big Africa festival. George, George, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Loud and clear. I think we lost you a bit. Uh, but definitely, uh, this is exciting to see the international media jumping to the AFCON 2021. I, I want us to, and, and of course, we've had the president, Ekofuado, asking the uh, black stars to actually bring the cup home now the question on the uh, minds of many is whether we have what it takes to bring the cup home what do you think do we have what it takes to bring the cup home it's really difficult to even answer what it takes to bring the cup home because when Zambia started the Africa Cup of Nations in 2012 I'm not sure would have said they had what it took to take the cup home so every competition has its own dynamics. You come to the competition and you try to take it game after game. And that's exactly what we're expecting the Black Stars to come out here and do. Uh, it's, 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 it's clear that we are not favourites, but it's easy to say that whether they are favourites or not, it's about what you produce on the pitch. We are hopeful that the Black Stars can surprise us in a very, very positive way. Okay, so this is the question we put on a poll on Twitter. Let's see the results of that poll on Twitter. Uh, a lot of uh, the comments are coming in, and this is what we put there. Ghana, uh, do the Black Stars have what it takes to end the country's 40-year trophy drought at the tournament? And here you have it. Yes, 40.1%. The no's, 37.1%. And maybe 22.8%. Oriku, what do you make of this poll? I thought I thought a majority of Ghanaians are not confident. If you if you look at the team that has been put out there, uh, despite it being you know our third oldest team with an average age of twenty five point zero four since uh, two thousand and eight, there is a little bit of a caveat that people are not considering, mm. and that's the fact that this team is extremely inexperienced. Now, seventeen out of the twenty eight players are going to play the, the AFCON for the very first time. Okay. And so I think it's a bit harsh to be able to put such expectations on people who don't even know how it feels like mm. uh, to play in the Africa Cup of Nations. And if you also to look at, you know, the ratio of the number of appearances that each player has made for the Black Stars to the members of the team, each player is standing at an average of just 18 appearances for the national team. So this is a very inexperienced team. 
I think that this is a learning process for the Black Stars if we are to be realistic. And uh, I think the pressure this time around is much less. Mm. It, it was way worse in 2019, mm -hmm. where you know the team had gone to uh, the semi-finals consecutively since 2008 all the way to 2017. So there were expectations. Asamojan was in the team, and a lot of people expected Ghana to go further than the round of 16. This time around, I think a fair few people understand how young the team is. Uh, however, when you also have your president saying that they have to bring the trophy home, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the disconnect as to, you know, the technical team wanting to take it game by game and the president still being very adamant that Ghana has to win the title. And so it's, it's, it's one of those things. We'll, we'll definitely see how things pan out as the competition goes. But one thing we know for certain is that if Ghana pulls a miracle and wins a fifth title, Mullivan Raiva should be taking $300,000 home. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Jerome has just joined us. Jerome, um, it's interesting, the team that we have. And you say 17 out of the whole team, yeah. they are just new players. It's their first time. Yeah. Uh, this is interesting. But we still have the likes of Thomas Pate. Yeah. We have Andrew uh, Didiayu yeah. and uh, the others. And there's a new kid on the block, uh, uh, Didier. Is it Kamal Dean? Kamal Dean, yeah. who is on. Uh, Jerome, you think we have what it takes to bring the cup home, just as the president is asking us to do? I think we are just being over ambitious. I mean, it's, it's okay to be hopeful. It's okay for us to express the, the wish and the hope that we, we win the competition. But we need to be fair to us. We need to be real and accept that in terms of team performance, we've not had the best. And so that is one side of the coin. I, I would wish that we win the competition, but the other side of the coin, as I see it, is that we don't have what it takes to win the competition. People have said that, yeah, it doesn't always take a good team to win competitions like this. My, my difference of opinion there is that you still need to play well to win the competition. And if you look at what Algeria did to us, if we are going to see episodes of that in this competition relative to Ghana's performance, then winning the competition is something out of our reach. But you see, this football, I heard Oriku talk about how we have uh, 10 or more, even 13 or so uh, debutants in our team. And my mind goes back to Nigeria, what they did in 2013 in South Africa. They had almost 20 debutants in their team. They actually drew their first two matches. Nigerians gave up. The media described the Super Eagles as Super Chickens. And <laughs> virtually everybody gave up on them, only for them to win their third game. And eventually they become champions of the competition. So you look at it this way, and there is some amount of hope for Ghana that, look, irrespective of what we are saying, that we may not have the best of players, we may not have a very good team out there, there is still that hope that. If the boys can fight on the field within 90 minutes and get the kind of results that will push them throughout the competition, probably will be in the finals and lift the trophy. You never know. But going by the numbers, the stats as we know it, I wouldn't <laughs> say Ghana will win the competition. But even before I go into the, uh, the number of people who are playing, I've seen Baba Abdul Rahman, I've seen Daniela Mate, Alexander Jiku, Baba Idrisu. I want us to look at all of them, their strength and what they bring on the table. But first, let's also look at the opening match between uh, Cameroon and Burkina Faso. I mean, this is uh, the, open, uh, the match that actually set the tone for the whole AFCON 2021. How would you describe it, George Adugenia? Hello, George. Okay, so Jerome, Jerome, you can you can address yeah. that for me. I think I think it was uh, a very good game for a start. I I was rooting for Cameroon, but yeah, take it from me, when Burkina scored, I was very excited because I wanted to see how the Cameroonians will react. And fortunately for uh, football fans like myself, Cameroon came up with a very good reaction. You would say that, oh, the, the equalizer was a penalty. Normally, when goals are scored from the spot kick or from the spot, not many people want to give credit to the team. But look, the Cameroonians fought back very well, managed to get two 
two goals from 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 penalties and ended the game as as winners. I think the Bokabis did, did did themselves a lot of harm, especially in committing those fouls in the box which the referee awarded for which the referee awarded penalties to Cameroon. I would expect that for a competition of this nature in 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 the box, I mean defenders would be very careful how they mark their 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 opponents not to commit the kind of fouls I saw the Bokinabis commit. But in general, it was it was a fine game for a start. I mean, as as an opener to the competition, this it was an exciting game. There were a lot of trails. Uh, Cameroon even scored a third goal that was disallowed. I mean, from from the replays I have seen, I don't know whether the VAR got it wrong, but I thought it was a good goal. I'm looking forward to a lot more excitement, especially with Ghana playing today. Mm. George, the junior is on now. George, kindly unmute for me. I was earlier asking you what you make of the open game between Cameroon and Burkina Faso. Um, I, let, 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 let me give a question again, sorry. Um, so, I didn't get your question again. Can you, can you come back again? Please? So I'm just asking you to um, tell me how Aisha. you, what, how, how would you describe Aisha, the, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, George. And if you can hear me, I'm just asking you to describe to me. Hello, Aisha, assess, can you hear me? All right, so let's try and fix George Adujunia's uh, Zoom. He will come back and, and join us with us. But Ulrich, how would you describe the opening game between Cameroon and Burkina Faso? Well, I think it's what you would expect from an opening game, especially in that first half. We had a bit of everything. Uh, we had, what, the earliest yellow card in an AFCON game uh, for about 12 to 15 years. Uh, in the first 40 seconds of the match, that really you know, set the pace of the game. Uh, we had the underdogs as Burkina Faso scoring uh, through Sangari. And then, uh, you know, the host coming back into the game with two penalties. The first use of VAR on the group stage in the history of the competition. The opening ceremony was colourful and really great with a you know, 3D lion moving across the pitch and all that. So it was a spectacle. And the football that we saw matched what we saw uh, witnessed at the opening ceremony. So I think it really set the tone well. And uh, fans always love to see goals. Seeing three goals in the game, mm -hmm. I think, was a, was a good start to the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. well, we'll be looking at the, uh, the lineup for the game. Uh, uh, quite interesting uh, young men on this uh, squad. We'll be looking at them and analysing their strengths and weaknesses. But let me take you to the ground right now. Michael Ashale is joining us live from the Kwame Nkrumah Cycle. Uh, Michael... How is the anticipation there? All right, so we'll try and bring uh, Papani Ashali, who is in Seco, where people are, you know, anxious to watch that match. I mean, it's been a long time, 40 years, we haven't uh, gotten any cup from AFCON. Right now, the deal is for us to bring the cup home, just like the president is asking us to do. Papani Ashale will join me very soon, but let's look at the team, the squad. Um, I, I, so let's start with the, those who've been there before. Um, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, Thomas Pate is yeah. there, Andrew Didiayu is there. Um, let, okay, so yes, so you have Thomas, you have Jordan Ayu, you have Andrew Ayu, you have John Pencil. Um, what do they bring on the table? Well, and Joseph Pinto. Yeah, jo Joseph Pinto, he's a, he's a young winger with Genk, and he would also uh, be playing at the AFCON for the very first time. But I think what's important is that in each department of the field, you have one experienced player who has been at the AFCON. You look at the defence, and Daniel Amate and Babaraman, uh, they, they've racked up several Africa Cup of Nations Cups, and, and so they, would sh they should be able to uh, marshal the defence. And in midfield, you have Thomas Pate, uh, who will also be playing uh, in the African Cup. Uh, this is not his first time. He had experience from the tournament. And then up front, you have Andre Ayu and Jordan Ayu. Andre himself, he has a century of cups for the Black Stars. Uh, he's playing in his seventh AFCON. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's a good you know, tournament for him, especially because he's coming in as captain. And uh, you know, he's come of age now. And if he really wants to make an impact as captain of the team, this is the opportunity. But he and his brother, they also have years of experience in the Africa Cup of Nations. And you'd expect them to lead from the front 
and you know pull the team along with them. Uh, for Andrea, you record a record beckons for him, and he could uh, join the elites in African football if he scores in this tournament. Uh, he will become the fourth player to score in six different tournaments. Uh, there are only four players in that. Uh, there are only three players currently in that list, and Asamojan is part of them. Okay. Uh, let's look at the young uh, um, people that you talk about. How is it going to be like for them? Well, I think for, for a young player, you, you always want to play in such tournaments. You, you grow up uh, watching you know, some of these players, watching the best players from Africa, and you dream of playing there. I had the privilege of uh, speaking to one of the players in the team and he mentioned how, you know, it, it is your dream to play in the Africa Cup of Nations. So most of them are realizing their dream. But however, you want to make sure that psychologically they're in the right place and there isn't too much of adrenaline. So they end up doing things where they're not applying a lot of common sense and trying to play out of their limits. You want to ensure that they keep a calm head and, you know, the occasion doesn't get to them. There isn't too much pressure on them. So I think that's why the, you know, 11 other players who've been there before have an even crucial role to play in this tournament to ensure that the 17 do feel at home and always communicate with them and make them feel that this is just another game. Mm. Mm. Jerem, um, what's your own assessment of this squad for the 2021 AFCON? I think it's the, it's the best that uh, we can put out there. I mean, even if it's not the best at this stage, there's very little you can do. I mean, if there is anything at all you can do, we, we just have to be hopeful. I mean, I've, I've looked at the starting lineup and it's very clear. You see a mixture of experience and, and some, some youthfulness. I mean, some youthful players there. Didi, Patti, Jordan easily come across as players that uh, have seen a bit of the competition. I mean, if you take Didi, for instance, he's been playing the AFCON since 2010 or so. And this is the time for him to lead the boys, show the kind of experience he's gathered over the years on the field of play. And, and drive the team to, so, uh, in as well, to so. the point that Ghanaians want to see. So for me, the team isn't that bad. I mean, this is a good mix. I, I'll be expecting to see, for instance, how our goalkeeper will perform. I've not seen him uh, in a real competitive uh, competition like this one. Yes, he was with us when we were playing in the, in the World Cup qualifiers. I'm expecting that... Uh, this afternoon or today, he will he he won't disappoint us. I mean, he will live up to expectation because you see, there's been so much talk about goalkeeping, and this is the time for him to prove his critics wrong. Now, I think we can go to the ground and see how people are preparing for the game that comes up uh, in less than thirty minutes. Uh, Papani Ashali is at the Kwame Nkrumah Seco. Papani, how is the uh, preparation like at Seco? Papani, uh, I'm just asking you to tell me how the, um, you know, how people are preparing in circle for this match. Papani? Aisha, so we are live here at the uh, um, circle or Donna bus terminal here. We'll be interacting some of the folks here at the bus terminal to measure their expectations and their reactions as Ghana prepares to clash with Morocco in its opening game with the uh, in its opening game with Morocco a few minutes from now here. We'll speak to some of them here. But throughout the day some of the opinions that we we'll have been getting have been to the act that well, it's been nearly 40 years and Ghana has not been able to get a single thing, uh, uh, a single trophy in that 40 year drought. So we'll be asking them I mean, how, what, what they make of, of this. Let me, let me start my gentleman here. So, Ghana, 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 Bessia, Morocco, uh, four o'clock. And then, uh, um, who's Ghana team now? Eh, Bibi, uh, what did you Ghana, but we're in Morocco. Eh, uh, what's uh, 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 uh
Ghana 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 Okay, so he is sure that Ghana is going to be winning against Morocco. First man, uh, Ghana by winning Morocco. Ah, uh, your best one, your best winning. How many, how many goals? Your best one, two nil. Two nil. Uh, one in one, but match a goal. I'm a dumb boy, and I believe he's over to me. For the first time, I saw Maja and Bobby. Oh, uh, uh, GD was at team no one, I saw Maja and Bobby. No, oh, GD. What did you say? Maybe we're just a bit yassi. And now, I'm playing in the Tosa, I shall plan to hit you. And see, you're better to me and Young boy, first goal, second goal, they tell you. They tell you. Uh, at the end of 19 minutes, 2 0. We have 2 0. 2 0. Great. Uh -huh. So he says that one, he knows that Ghana is going to be scoring 2 0. He's given us the name of the goal scorers. But first of all, second half, no better goal. No, yeah, better goal, no, second half. Uh -huh. In a second half. Okay, so according to him, if Ghana is going to play according to him, Ghana should be expecting to be scoring two goals in the second half. Uh, boss man, if you want to make uh, and I'm saying, Ghana, Echo Bom Morocco, who feels like Ghana be winning? Ghana be winning. I don't think I want Satras to be winning. They do go. Mm. Uh, they do go. How many goals are we scoring? Uh, are you 2 1? 2 1? Yeah. Uh, who are going to score the two goals for Ghana? Dede and Blada. Dede and his brother? Yeah. Mm. First half or second half? Uh, yeah, first half, no, two, no, straight. But people have been talking a lot that Asamajan is not playing this game. And possibly, uh, and you know how the African countries people used to say they used to fear us. You don't think that we should be scared that Asamoja is not in our team? Uh, but Asamoja is the the shop of the world. It's a very big one. But I'm there. So here, yeah, I should we'll get some more uh, reactions. But from the people I've been interacting with, it seems that Ghana is in a comfortable lead. Uh, we started from a straight win, and that we came to a 2-0, and now that's a 2-1. Well, let, let's try for some more reactions to the football game that we played a few more minutes um, from now here yeah. uh, to talk to some of the folks here at the Odona uh, bus terminal to measure their reaction. Bossman, uh, good afternoon. Ghana be babo at Eriawe at 4 p.m. Oh, trust the Ghana team with somebody winning now. Oh, uh, baby, definitely. How many, how many goals have you Two one. One more of his ambit matches are going to my money minimum, but me prediction and uh, what GD or tactics not are your coach in the subasino? Oh, coach in the on one or Kitamo friend, nobody used to be an epe. But Oshep players now, what you see some about first game, opening game now? Um, what do you make of it? And mom, the minimum players are what you see on our own but what baby piano. Uh, mm. 40 years, you share, you win a tight in the bidder. If you said this year, yeah, 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 boy, I'm what you're doing. Okay, so that's the gentleman here. He says that, well, if Ghana tries, possibly we may be looking at ending our 40 year drought in terms of trophies when it comes to the Afghan. Let me interact with, finally with these folks here and let me ask them, see, uh, boss man. Uh, um, Ghana, Ghana be bobo, Ewiawe, um, Omni um, Morocco be bobo. Who are GDS Ghana be winning Morocco game? No? Oh, me, me, or GDS, me, or GDS. Yeah. Anything that was a GDS, you know? Oh, because uh, Ghana football, me, who say, you see, I'm going to have them cargoes, me, or GDS. Yeah. But what who players now, you choose here, you call know? bobo, no? Ah, me, who be pan. Who shall, some players, which man win this game, now, who, 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 changes be who say, yeah? Oh, is, Changes now, changes now, my India, your palm, what did you, what did you say? Oh, I'll go to Hindi, but I'm not sure. Oh, I mean, correct score, I won't go pay, I won't go pay, correct score. Now, when the best is I'll go now, my oh, hey, Jordan, are you, Jordan, are you the best to my mind? Okay, so it looks like the are you brothers are the favorite of the folks here at the Odona bus terminal here. Interact with some of the conductors here and the drivers here, they tell me. Well, Ghana seems to be in the, in, the, in the lead to be winning its opening match against Morocco in the AFCON. Well, the Agu brothers seem to be the tip to be giving Ghana those winning goals. Aisha. Papa Nia Sale there from uh, the Kwame Nkrumah circle and a lot of people are uh, optimistic Ghana will bring will win today's match but which team are they playing against the Moroccan team itself has done very well for itself over the period at least it's won its last six matches but unfortunately this time um, their top player mm. is not playing this game what does this mean for uh, Ghana and the game as well 
Well, yeah, uh, Hakim Ziyech, he's had uh, a little role with their coach, uh, Hali Hojic, and uh, is, is one that spans all the way back to, you know, mid, mid last year, uh, where the coach complained of his attitude towards national team games. He was called to warm up for a match, uh, and then he would be substituted, and the coach felt that he wasn't warming up uh, as if he wanted to play. And ever since then, the coach has, you know, questioned his attitude towards the national team. So he's not been called it since. Could be a reason why he's yeah, not he's part not of the he's team. not part of the team. He's not been part for uh, throughout the World Cup qualifiers. Oh wow! And Morocco played six games in that World Cup qualifiers. They scored 20 goals, conceded one, and won all their six games. Okay. So there's no problem with that yet. There will still be a side. Uh, with uh, with a lot of threats going forward. Mm. Uh, they have Sofiane Buffal, uh, who's been on form in Liga, a very creative player, knows how to find space and dribble past players. Mm. And then uh, there's also uh, Eli Sher, who plays in the championship uh, with QPR. They do have a number of injuries uh, with uh, El Kabi not uh, present. El Nasri also, who plays for Sevilla, would not be in the team as well. And so they do have a couple of injury situations, but you do expect them to still compete uh, with the depth and quality that they do have. That means that uh, Ghana has a tough game to play this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. this was on paper the toughest game for the Black Stars. Well, and what should they be looking out for? What, I mean, what should be our strategy? Well, Morocco have lined up in a 3-4-3 formation and, uh, you know, throughout their qualifiers. And they've not lost a game in 90 minutes, you know, regular time uh, since 2019 when they were beaten by Benin in the Africa Cup of Nations. And so... They've been on a very long stretch of, uh, you know, being unbeaten. And so their side would know how to win games. However, you need to add context to their World Cup qualifier games. Uh, they had to play, they played all six games at home uh, due to, you know, a number of issues. Uh, an opponent that they faced had a cool situation away. One didn't have a good pitch situation and all that. So things have been in their favor. So they've played at home for a very long time. Okay. This time around, they are coming to a new country in Cameroon. Mm. And it will be a different feel for them. However, they've tried their best. Uh, that's the Moroccan FA, to make their team feel at home. And so they traveled with a 5,000 uh, kilogram cargo plane, mm. which has their own food, has their own you know, toiletries, uh, their own chefs, and their own personnel, everything. Also due to COVID-19 and all that. So they want to make the team feel like how they do feel in Morocco. So the FA have done their best, and we'll see how you know, they fare against Ghana. But they're playing a 3 4 3 formation, uh, love to stretch the pitch, move the ball really well. And so Ghana has to be disciplined especially defensively, uh, more than what we saw against Algeria. Okay, Ghana has to be disciplined. Jerome, is, is that what you feel? Should that be our strategy? Absolutely. I mean, I have said that this game is going to define us in the, in the competition. I don't think the rest of our group games will be as difficult as today's games. Uh, I mean, today's game. I am not underestimating the opponents we are going to play after Morocco. I'm just saying that Morocco... Uh, their pedigree, it's, it's, it's going to be more drilled than the rest of our openings. So if we don't go out there showing the kind of discipline Rico is talking about, we, we are going to face difficulties. I, I am banking my hopes on Didi and his brother and Patty and some of the other experienced guys to, to really come to the party because the Moroccans are going to get at us. I mean, they are not going to, they know what Ghana can do. You know, uh, Ghana may not be doing too well, but they do know that uh, this is a country that, I mean, loves football. This is a country that does a lot when it comes to football. And Ghanaians would expect the Blasters to, to, to go all out and win this game and maybe the competition. So they're not going to leave anything to chance. I mean, the point about they missing Ziyech, I have said that it is not something the Moroccans are even thinking about because like Oriku pointed out, they have, I mean, gone uh, so many matches without him since June or July. And this coach has proven that he doesn't need Ziyech to, to, to do whatever he's doing. So it is something we should, it's good we are talking about it, but it's something we should put away and face the guys who are now in Cameroon. Ziyech is not there. I, I am praying that our defense, I mean, in terms of strategy, our defense will be watchful because in the game against Algeria, although it was a trial match, normally trial, match, trial matches have their own uh, 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 composure from, from competitive games. 
what I witnessed in our game against Algeria wasn't the best in terms of our defending, in terms of our goalkeeping. And I'm expecting that with the Moroccans not being too different from Algeria in terms of their play, in terms of the aggression they can show, our defense will be resolute enough and, and, and contain any amount of pressure that will be put on them. And then the attack will also live up to expectation. If we can get these two right, I have no fears in, in, in the midfield battle. I think for that area, we'll be able to match them. But, but of course, getting it right means that we have to look at our previous games and how, how we have performed. I mean, let's look at our, our strengths and our weaknesses in previous games at AFCON. I mean, how would you rate the Black Stars, their strength and their weaknesses in previous games? Well, not to be a prophet of doom, I think uh, what the, the, the weakness for this team in this competition, if what Asamojan has done in previous competitions is anything to go by at all, or for the Black Stars, is going to be an attack. I, I, I don't see, I have not seen any sharpness when we play up front. And, and, and for me, I have some fears there. And I've also not liked the, the business of our defense. I mean, the kind of conduct they have shown in some of our previous games, for me, uh, hasn't been too convincing. If you watch the World Cup qualifiers, two, three of our matches were dry. I mean, they were not matches that you would say really showed that this is a convincing Black Stars team. But you see, qualifiers are completely different from tournaments. This is a tournament when you lose a lot, uh, uh, when you lose a game here, or when you draw a game here, you'll be able to recover maybe second or third game. And particularly for this competition where the, the, uh, some of the best third place teams can even advance to the next stage of the competition, I don't think we have too much to fear. We, we just have to make sure that we do the necessary things. And that is what I mentioned. In defense, we must be very careful, we must be very watchful. The North, the, the North Africans are noted for attacking in, in, in a very ferocious manner. And I'm expecting that our defense will be able to hold their own against them. And if we can contain them and, and be able to score, the Ghana I know can really uh, do, do something. If we are not able to score and not able to defend, obviously, <laughs> we are going to have problems. So, so J J Jerome is sensing that, I mean, the Moroccans will do more of the attacks. And so we have to try and do a lot more of defense. And he says that our previous games has not been well coordinated. And so we need to do the necessary things. Do you have same fears, uh, Uriko? Yeah, you know, when you're playing in a tournament, a lot of factors come to play. And even in the match that just ended between Senegal and Zimbabwe, everyone thought, you know, Senegal were going to blow Zimbabwe away. And... You know, the silver medalist in 2019 needed a last-minute penalty uh, uh, from Sadio Mane to win the game. So the most important thing is that you stay in the game. No matter how good or bad you are, you have to stay concentrated and make sure that you stick to the game plan. Because Ghana is facing a Morocco team that have been together for two years now. Mm -hmm. And they've been unbeaten in that two-year period. The coach barely changes his system or his players. And so everyone knows what's expected of them. Uh, contrastingly... This Ghanaian side with Milo van Rijvac, Milo has had just about four, five, six games with the team. Mm -hmm. And all of them have been qualifiers prior to this tournament. So he usually spends just a couple of days with the team. So he hasn't really seen his full imprint on how the team plays, how the team shapes up and all that. So Ghana is still a work in progress and we are facing an, you know, a finished product in Morocco. So the odds don't favor the Black Stars heading into this game. But as I said, in the tournament, once you stay tight and defend well, you give yourself a chance as time goes on, uh, you know, within the game. So there's also that element of luck, but everything depends on how much of, you know, effort that you put in and stay within the game. Mm. How much of effort you put in and stay within the game. But I know that there are also some uh, new countries that have come on. Uh, they've never played before. It's their first time at the Gambia and Comoros, I think. Uh, which one is in Ghana's um, team? Uh, I mean, the... Uh, the group. Yeah, that's Comoros. Comoros, yeah. and, and what does this mean for Ghana? <laughs> Should we be panicking? Oh, no. But Comoros <laughs> only started playing, you know, CAF qualifiers and FIFA qualifiers 14 years ago. Mm. And so there are minnows uh, on the continent. Uh, a lot of their players come from France, Portugal, you know, playing in League 1 and then second League 2 and second divisions in these countries. So this is enough for them. You know, qualifying for their first ever Africa Cup of Nations after starting football 
you know, professionally in 14 years. This is a big step for them. And we saw celebrations throughout the country when, you know, they qualified. They are less than 1 million uh, in population. Okay. I think uh, just above, above 900,000. Uh, they're built on, you know, a volcanic island, a very, very small country. Mm. And so football is, is, is not <laughs> something that they've invested heavily in like the Black Stars have done. So I think it's two teams on, you know, the, the opposite ends. Comoros, they just want to enjoy the experience. The mm. Black Stars, uh, they have a mission. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's to end, try their best to end that 40-year drought. And so I don't think Comoros should be a problem at should all. Should be a problem at all. So what are your expectations at this afternoon at 4 p.m.? Well... For me, I think the most important thing is that you qualify from the group. And you could still do that even if you lose to Morocco. But what you want to do as a team is to give yourself enough confidence after this game. Now, that doesn't solely depend on the result. You could still lose this game and gather enough confidence on the performance and use that to beat Gabon and Comoros. So I think what's important is that the Black Stars have to fight. They have to leave it on the pitch and know that we did everything possible to be able to win that game. Once you do that, you go in with your head held up high, even if you do lose. Mm. And then you carry on knowing that if you do that same thing against Gabon and Comoros, you should get six points and qualify. What does Ghana need to uh, qualify, I mean, from the stage? Well, it's, it's, it's been made easier with uh, 24 teams across now. Uh, they want a round of 16. And so essentially, top two teams automatically qualify. However, uh, the best four third place teams also qualify. So you want to keep that in mind as well. So that in the worst case scenario, Ghana could still qualify as one of the best third place teams. And so some of the things that they will be considering is the number of goals that you concede, your goal difference and your number of points. So even if you are losing, make sure not to lose in a big you know, margin mm. and maybe a one goal margin and then you pick up a point elsewhere and win somewhere else. But typically with third place teams qualifying, four points, even sometimes three points is enough. With a good goal difference is enough. So you'd expect the Black Stars to pick anything about four points, and that should be enough to see them in the round of 16. Okay, so just less than, uh, in less than five minutes, that game will be on, and you can uh, tune in live to 99.7 Joy FM. You can tune in to Love FM 99.5 in Kumase. It's on myjawonline.com, and we have the live match for you between Ghana and Morocco. Um, Autry, uh, Jerome Autry, uh, let me pick your final thoughts. Uh, what exactly do you want to see at 4 p.m.? Well, at the end of the day, I want to see Ghana winning. But I would also love to see us play well. Just like Uriku said, give yourself the kind of confidence that will drive you throughout the competition because uh, from here, it might, it might look easy, but as we progress as to we progress to the knockout, uh, knockout stage, it will be tougher. So we win and, and, and build the confidence for the rest of the matches to come, nothing else. Uh, given the nature of this competition, uh, two top teams making 16, and then the best four, look, it will be disastrous if we don't make it to the round of 16. Mm. Uh, so all the best to the Black Stars at 4 p.m. But one advice for you viewers, kindly take your food, your fufu, <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to eat, please do before you start watching the match. I will take a break on The Pulse. We'll be back with more.